Volunteers in service to America, otherwise known as VISTA volunteers, are now working full-time with the police department as part of our community policing strategy. We're in Bartlett Park, and we'll be speaking with community police officer Karen Dimmick and some VISTA volunteers to find out a little more about this program when we return. Welcome back to Police Report. We're here with community police officer Karen Demick, and she's going to be working with some of the VISTA volunteers. Karen, I understand that uh, this is the first time in VISTA's history they're going to be working with a police department. Yes, that's what I understand also. Um, the Bartlett Park area has been assigned three VISTA volunteers. Um, uh, since they've come to the Bartlett Park area, I've enjoyed working with them. Uh, today, the third member, Elizabeth, was added to our crew, and so far we had a great day. We're going over uh, several activities that we're planning for May and June. Um, June 25th, we have a uh, Safe Kids Bike Rodeo. Uh, the bike rodeo will be taking place at the Frank Pierce Bartlett Park Community Center. Uh, on Saturday, June 25th. So on that day, we hope to have a great turnout of the neighborhood kids and our VISTA volunteers uh, have a big part in this particular day. Um, they're trying to organize carnival rides, activities, events, and uh, all children's hospital with the assistance of uh, one of their directors is going to give us uh, safety tips on bike riding for different age groups, uh, different size of the children, um, and give them advice on how to ride safe. Okay, well, you're going to be meeting up with some VISTA volunteers shortly. Do you mind if we tag along? No, come right along. I enjoy the company. Hi, Karen. Hi, Betsy. Hi, Karen. Hi, Don. Hi. Karen, I want you to meet Elizabeth Proctor. She's our new VISTA volunteer in Bartlett Park neighborhood. This is Karen Demick, our CEO. Hi, Elizabeth. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Well, welcome aboard. Thank you. Great, great. So, how was your Authorized originally in 1964 by the Economic Opportunity Act, the VISTA program has provided full-time volunteers to thousands of low-income communities across the nation. VISTA seeks to achieve its mission by assigning volunteers to sponsoring organizations for the purpose of working at tasks that are determined by the sponsoring organization and the low-income communities that they serve. Okay, well, how about since we're in the area, we go over and see Scott at the St. Pete Tennis Center and see how his day's going. Okay. Yeah. Great. Let's take a walk. Let's go. Hi, Scott. How you doing, Karen? Fine. How are you today? I just thought we'd swing by for just a moment of your time, and I'd like to introduce Elizabeth Proctor. She's our new VISTA volunteer. Glad to meet you. This is Scott. I think you've met John and Betsy before. So. How y'all doing? Um, Hi, Scott. Betsy tells me that uh, some changes have been going on and taking place here at the Tennis Center, so uh, we thought we'd come by and hear it from you. Something uh, possibly involving the juveniles for the summer. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're interested in. Well, good. Uh, well, among some of the obvious changes, we have a new pro shop that's been installed, new lights have been put in and uh, also some new renovations such as we have a new coat of paint and Excellent. other important items. Mm -hmm. We have a junior program for the kids Good. where um, you know, we get some volunteers, players to play out here mm -hmm. and they're do making donations, some money and some old rackets, tennis balls, even old tennis shoes. Super. And okay. uh, we're going to get the kids out here uh, as young as five years of age up to ten in the younger group. And then the teen group, uh, 11 to 14 years of age. And uh, the, the, the teens will be on Tuesdays from 10.30 to 12. Mm -hmm. And uh, the main idea is to get kids playing tennis again. Right. Instead of on the street getting in trouble. And, and, uh, is yeah. there any fee for these children? These kids, no. The, the main idea is to get them involved and make them enjoy tennis. If they like it enough, mm -hmm then they can go ahead up to the, the next level and take lessons with the phone. There are fees for that. If I have a group of kids, which I have several in mind right now, mm -hmm. they're in my neighborhood. They're not affiliated mm -hmm. at all with Bartlett Park or Frank Pierce Center. No after school or anything. But they're going to be free this summer. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of want to steer these kids somewhere. We're, we've got a couple couple things right now that we're interested in doing with these particular group of juveniles, but mm -hmm. if we could direct them here, would there still be no fee? Because that's 
a lot of the concern. Yeah, for the initial grassroots program, there would be no right. fee. Okay. For the kids, but if 11 they escalated through the program, there would they, be. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Um, also, we're changing our fees out here to help the kids out some. Right. Um, what that includes is, uh, well, first we're going to a daily fee. So you pay okay. one amount if you're an adult, it's $6, mm -hmm. you can play as long as you want. The next thing is for kids, it'll be two dollars. So it's a big, big reduction in cost. Right, right. And they can enjoy themselves playing tennis and, and breaks or whatever. Um, but the big bargain for kids is for those kids to play in the middle of the afternoon mm -hmm. from 12 to 6, the fee is going to be 50 cents. Oh, I think that's fabulous. wonderful. <laughs> fabulous. Okay. Ow, whoa, whoa. One of our members uh, had a rough day. Uh-huh, I can see that. And uh, he, he uh, got a little uh, disgusted, mm -hmm. and he threw it to the ground, and, and as you can see, it broke the frame. But it looked just like a fish to me, you know? Extremely creative, Scott. So oh, I yeah. threw a little fish good. tail, a little uh, eye on there, and, and it's, it's a little piece of conversation there. You're not kidding. <laughs> but why is it in your office? Uh, because his, his wife does all. Well, he doesn't want his wife to find out. <laughs> so it's mine now. <laughs> I think we can get a nice uh, frame, a little bit of matting on the back of that, and put it as a trophy. Mm -hmm. A wall mount. Do you want to show some of the other sites around the uh, Yeah, let's go look at the pole court. Okay, yeah, let's we'll show the pole court. That's great. And this is where the pro teaches most, most of his lessons. Uh, and his name's Rich Terrell. He's okay, a very now good pro. What's the difference for this pro court as opposed to these courts? Okay, as you notice, you'll see it's completely surrounded Isolated. by fence. Mm -hmm. So if you hit a ball, it's not going anywhere. Okay. Whereas if you if you look at the other courts, you might yes. want to turn around and take a look at the uh, courts here. They're just all right next to each other. So if you hit one ball just a little crooked, you're going to go down all the way down to the fifth court. Yep. And it's going to make it very difficult to keep track of your tennis balls. And you notice he's got a shopping cart full of tennis balls. But if he's a pro, shouldn't he be able to keep it within the white lines? We're not worried about Rich. We're worried about his <laughs> lessons. <laughs> he's 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 lessons. lessons. <laughs> That's who did the fish. <laughs> you have a pro did the fish, right? And then, you know, it's behind us, we ever stayed in court. It was dedicated yeah. to Chris Everett in 1991. And this is one her, where she won her first pro tournament, and that was in 1971. She beat Billie Jean King. Right here. Right here on this court, that's right. Super. So if you want to play, we're up until 10 o'clock, Monday through Thursday, and 9 o'clock on Fridays. Okay. And uh, if you're, you've got a group of people who want to play, you want us to organize a round robin or whatever you like, a little tournament for your group, we can do that for you. All right. Okay, well, uh, thanks for coming out. Thank you. We'll talk nice to meeting you, later, Elizabeth. Nice Scott. Meeting Thank you too. very much for your time. You're very welcome. Have thanks. a good day. Bye. Thanks, Scott. You got it. Thank you. What kind of training do you get to be a VISTA volunteer? Uh, we had four days training in Orlando at the end of last month. Uh, we went through a lot of workshops to learn what we could do, uh, what we can't do, uh, how to get people involved, uh, how to look for volunteers. Uh, how to help raise money, which is something that uh, there's not much of. Uh, we came to back to uh, St. Pete. Uh, we've had lots of meetings and orientations with the police department, uh, the planning department, uh, city hall, uh, you name it, we've been there. Betsy, as a VISTA volunteer, what exactly is your job? Okay, there are two tasks, basically, uh, that the VISTA program has set up for us. The catchwords are mobilize and educate. We are to go into our three targeted neighborhoods, mobilize the people in those neighborhoods to participate in the improvements being made in the neighborhood and participate in the programs that we're going to help establish for the neighborhood. And educate, we are to um, help them to learn what services are available to them within the neighborhood um, as far as the social service network, the WIN program, um, basically what the, the community policing officers, what their responsibility is to the neighbors, and what the city hall responsibility is to the neighbors. We have found that in the neighborhoods that we're in, there's a real communication problem between the people on the street and the people at city hall and the police department. They want us to go in and bridge that gap and kind of help those people get a little close to, closer to understanding what the people at the top are doing. 
How broad has the community participation been so far? Good question. Um, this is such a brand new program that everybody is still a little nervous about what the expectations for this program can be. We've had a lot of response as to training us and t teaching us what each of the different um, areas in the city government and the police department are doing. Now we just have to get together and um, kind of capsulize that in, so we can present it to the people in our neighborhood. Elizabeth, I know you've done some training already, but um, do you have any other training you have to uh, fulfill? Uh, yeah, we'll probably have to attend meetings uh, with the police department, uh, with the uh, representatives of the city, uh, probably with the community associations, Crime Watch. Um, yeah, I think our education uh, is yet to be expanded, so to speak. VISTA volunteers pledge themselves to serve on a full-time basis for a term of one year. During their term of service, Volunteers live among and at the economic level of the people they serve. The volunteers' roles in addressing the problems of poverty in a particular community are to mobilize community resources and increase the capacity of the low-income community to solve its own problems. Although VISTA volunteers serve as important links between local sponsors and the people being helped, it is crucial to the concept of local self-reliance that sponsoring organizations plan for the eventual phase-out of VISTA volunteers and for the absorption of the volunteers' functions by other facets of the community.